again, is there any announcement, any joy, or any concern anyone would like to share? No? So if not, we'll begin with our opening hymn, our gathering hymn, Give Me Jesus. Those were able to please rise. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, 
that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn my back, turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall be put that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is read responsibly. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I call. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the, of, of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. And I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you to save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought low, and God saved me. Turn again, turn again to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt well with you. For you have rescued my life from death, my ears from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. The second reading is a reading from the letter of James, the third chapter. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, Yet they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world, world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by heaven. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth? From the same opening brought both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine fig? Figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. The word of the Lord.
along with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man has undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on buying things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up the cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for the sake, for my sake, and for the sake of the gospel, will save it. For what will the prophet them? to gain the whole world and perfect their life. Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of them, the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord
you have an interest in reading the Bible that talks about our tongue, how we use it to say good things and bad things. And somehow we use the tongue to say, I love you, but also we use the tongue to say, I hate you. And we use uh, our I words. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea is this: to be uh, aware, be conscious, know that we can give so many compliments and somehow be nice to people with the words that we say, and we can hurt badly other people. And so the point that in today's uh, reading is be careful what you say and know that even though we may think that words cannot hurt, like we learn in bullying and saying things that can hurt other people, with our words we can hurt others. So we need to think that our words are not intended to hurt, are intended to be showing other people how much we love them. So let us finish with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus. Be with us as we speak and help us to say nice, nice words not hurt anyone with the words we say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you. Sisters and brothers in Christ, peace and grace to everyone of you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let me start with a story of this man that was uh, traveling a, a road in the countryside. Not too many cars went by during the whole day, but he was traveling this road until he got a flat tire. He stopped, opened the trunk, found the spare tire, and then looked around and remembered that he removed the jack from the trunk and had no way of changing the tire. So he said, okay, he pulled up his phone, no bars, no connection. There he could not use the phone and try nothing. He was desperate until he saw far, far away a little house and decided to go to us for help. He started walking and said, I'm going to tell them that uh, they can lend me the job and I will return it. And immediately he answered his own thoughts and said, no, they, they will not allow me to borrow the, their jack. And, and so I will ask them, okay, let me use your phone. I will call AAA and surely they will come to help me. I don't think they will let me in the house these days. Nobody let it. It's a stranger coming to the house. But I will tell them that, that, that I'm a good person. I'm a, a righteous person. I, I, I will not do any harm to them. But once again, says, oh, I don't know if they will answer the door. A stranger coming in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I don't think they will open the door. I would say, well, just let me have for a few minutes your job and I'm going to return it once I change the tire. Or, or let me just call Triple A. I know that they will help me and it will be just. And he asked himself, they will not open the door. They will not run. And he started building up in his mind what's going to happen. So he got into the house, knocked on the door. And somebody else says, good morning. May I help you? And this man asked, asked, just told them, 
No, you cannot help me and you can keep your job and your phone. I don't need them. <laughs> so much gets built up in our minds about what's going on. And sometimes people that do not read our minds do not know what's going on. And we react as much as the reality that's happening in the outside as to our thoughts that are going in the inside. Um, a great theologian in the 20th century, Karl Barth, used to say that in order to preach, we have to have the Bible and the newspapers. <laughs> you have to connect them both. In order to know what's going on, you need the Bible and you need the news. Just to be aware of what is going on. And this is important as we try to understand um, the reading in the, the gospel today that have Jesus saying these harsh words to Peter. Get behind me, Satan. Wow. Get behind the same guy that just confessed him as the Messiah. He said, get behind me, Satan. And in this word, uh, we have a lot of pictures that are going on in our minds. But if we look in the scriptures, we may not understand exactly what is the meaning of Satan. Because we think that Satan is a person. Get behind me, Satan is a person that, uh, dressed in red, with a cape, with horns, and a trident. And we have these Middle Ages images of Satan. But sometimes we are not aware that Satan is Satan. It's a word in Hebrew. Every time you say Satan, you are using a Hebrew word. Satan is a word from the Old Testament that means the adversary. The one who accuses, the one who may deceive you, the one who leads you astray. And basically it is the opponent, the adversary. So it's not the name of a person, but a role that you play in other people's life. You may be an angel for other people as you bring hope, or you may be saint for other people as you become their adversary, as you disagree with their thoughts, or you disagree with what they're, you're doing. And when you judge other people, about what they're going through, you become Satan to them. In this sense, Jesus said, get behind me, Satan to Peter, because you're putting your mind on earthly things, not on divine things. You see, when we talk about 9-11, as we are remembering uh, the 20th anniversary of this tragedy in this country, we read that for these people, the Americans, New York, and the Twin Towers were Satan. For them, we in this country, we were Satan. And of course, we look at them as Satan. So this conflict, I'm not saying who's right and who's wrong, and this is a tragedy that was still born. But we are Satan to them, and they constantly refer to America as the Satan, the country of the Satan. And of course, we think of them as very satanic. So we need to keep perspective of what is Satan and somehow how we identify Satan as a bad thing and as a person, but it's a role, the role of the judge, the role of the adversary, the judge, the, the, the role of those who accuse us of anything. Now, this connects with the second reading, the reading of the book of James, that talks about evil. The evil things that can happen when we use our tongue and when we tell people's things, they disapprove, we say, and we crash in, in our thoughts with them and we become Satan to each other. And that is evil. How we sometimes cannot tame our tongue and we become evil. 
And even in this reading, in, in the third chapter of James, talk about the tongue being full of deadly poison. The tongue being full of deadly poison. And that resonated with another word that has been going around for quite some time. The virus. The virus. You know the word virus, etymologically, where the word virus come from, means poison. The word virus means the poison. And the virus is something that's been around for many, many centuries. It's not something that just appeared right now. We know that from the first cells in all animals and plants, they have to deal with virus. So a virus is plural. Virion is the singular. But virus is a general word that involves these elements that are not bugs, are not animals, are not uh, independent living creatures. They are just traces of DNA that when they be when they get into a living cell, they start altering their DNA and start replicating again and again. That is the nature of a virus. The virus was discovered in 1892 by Dmitry Ivanovsky. 1892, but it was not until 1931 when the invention of the electron microscope that they could see. Spiders are so small, so insignificant. They are 100 times smaller than a bacteria. So uh, you cannot see a virus with a microscope. You need an electron microscope to be able to, to have a glimpse of the, of the virus. And the, the thing is, well, who made the virus? And uh, with this talk about the Chinese, and, to fabricate a virus is part of a natural process of some DNA detaching from the cell and when they come in contact with other cells they reproduce and they start replicating um, the virus and you know I thought that somehow virus and gossip has some things in common and of course, uh, James is talking about gossip and saying things to other people. But virus, as gossip, are images of the reality that start replicating. And when we start a rumor, or when we are part of a rumor, and we start gossiping, this comes again and again and replicates from person to person to person to person. And the copies are not identical. They get variants. In the virus, we have we are battling the Delta variant. And the, the gossip, the gossip starts growing. And the gossip start making imperfect pictures of the previous thing. And it becomes something that was not original, like the broken telephone game. And it becomes adding more things. So in some respect, a virus is uh, like a gossip, or the gossip is like a virus that replicates and adds more things. And one of the interesting things that, that happens is that our words, so small, comes like the virus. And we use those uh, things that we reproduce among ourselves uh, as gossip that were before the pandemic and will be around us way after the pandemic is over. It's part of our nature. But this particular virus has something uh, that putting the news and the Bible together. This virus is called coronavirus. And corona in Spanish means crown. So the picture they have pictures of the coronavirus and the COVID-19. 
the pictures shows that they have like a crown. And that made another connection as we was looking into the text for today. We believe in a Christ and a Christ that is a king with a crown. So you see, we have Satan, the adversary, using the crown of the devil, and we look at another crown, the crown of Christ, that becomes our leader. And so the idea is, how can we use uh, the words that we normally use for gossip, for blessing, and not for hurting? And we need to clarify, what is a gossip? What is a gossip? A gossip is telling someone something that person who receives the gossip cannot do anything about it. Interesting way of looking at gossip. So when you open the magazine and you learn about the gossip of the people in the jet set and the people in the news and face it, it's full of gossip. And there are programs that are dedicated to spreading gossips. And unfortunately, people get addicted to gossip. And they want to know more. Not just about their neighbors or the people that live across the street or in their family. And when you say, you know, you know what happened? I heard. And you start going into the gossip. And why? Because that person you're telling cannot do anything about it. Just go like, oh, that's juicy. <laughs> but again and again, we are part of this chain. So when somebody wants to poison you with the virus of gossip, you say, no, sorry, I cannot hear that until that person is present. So you have to say something to the pastor, or to the council member, or to the neighbor, or to someone, you want to say, you know what? Okay, please allow this person to be present, and so that person can do something about it. Instead of just uh, making the replication of this gossip virus to go on and on and on. So, you have uh, your insert, and your insert, you have and this character with a shield defending against against the virus. Of course, if this shield that you have is what we have in ourselves, ready to stop the gossip and to stop the virus. Of course, we use uh, make uh, our mouth covering to uh, to avoid uh, spreading the rumors and. protects you from any virus that is coming, but it's also protecting the others from the virus that may come from you to others. So the shield works both, both ways. So my question is, as we look into the shield, uh, in Ephesians 6, they talk about the shield of righteousness. When you do the right thing, you put your mind on divine things, not on earthly things as Jesus was telling Peter. In this case, we need to protect ourselves and to protect others. And, of course, we do all we can to stop the spread of the virus, but we need to do all that we can to spread, to stop the spread of the gossips, of those things that people we talk to cannot do anything about it protects both ways. So the idea is our immune system may protect us and that's why we talk about vaccines and, and special diet and eating right and, and keeping the distance. So those are protections that we take. How can we do or what can we do to protect ourselves and others from harmful ways? It's like uh, carrying always an angel and a, uh, and a little devil on your shoulder. And 
the devil will tell her, tell her, tell her, share the news. And the angel says, no, just put your mind, the angel put, put your mind on heavenly things. You know, words can hurt, especially when we use our people to produce results that we want. Not necessarily looking at the same reality, like the story that, that we share at the beginning of the message. There's so many things going on in our minds, and people may not follow your train of thoughts, and ends up being replicated, and duplicated, and replicated again in a defective form, and we create not a delta variant, but a variance of the gossip that is totally detached from whatever happened. So my friends, all we can do is to, as Ephesians 6 says, to use the shield of righteousness and to avoid saying any gossip of any word that may harm. James tells us that a little match can set a fire in a whole forest. You know, a little word can hurt a lot of people. And uh, know that words not only can hurt, they can produce a damage, uh, a, a wound in the other person that sometimes never heals. So, who knows today is finding that being the adversary is something very common, but hurting the others as our adversaries is something we can avoid. Let us concentrate on divine things and listen to the voice of our angels, our messengers from God that tells us to love, to care for others instead of trying to make them as good as ourselves, sharing our opinions about what is right and what is wrong. Amen. The song of the day, the name of the day is, let me tell you, that's why I hope it's Christ.
Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, and Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died in his grave. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. May children and heirs of God's promise be prayed for the church, the world, and all in need. Revealing God, you have made yourself known through bread and wine, water and water. Continue to nurture your church, that it is a place where your presence is experienced and shared. Lord, in your mercy. We remember. Creating God, you brought life into being and called it good. Bring new creation to lands devastated by tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, fires, and other disasters. Restore forests and curb overflowing waters. Lord, in your mercy. We remember. Protecting God. You desire all people to live in peace and safety. Provide for all who are in danger. Strengthen first responders to help meet the complex needs of others. Provide care and compassion as they face trauma themselves. Lord, in your mercy. In your own prayer. Transforming God, you announce release to the captives and freedom to the oppressed. Break chains of discrimination and injustice. Amplify voices that go unheard and inspire us to advocate for those who are overlooked. Lord, in your mercy. We are prayer. Forming God, you gather this community together, shape our communal life, that in our prayer, praise, and worship, we honor you and encourage one another. Keep our disagreements civil and increase our joy in working together. Lord, in your mercy. We are prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are going through difficult times. Especially, we pray today for Wyatt and family, Alexandria, Mildred, Lana, Patricia, Michelle, Eddie, Enrique, Claudia, Ed, Lauren, Jerry, Carol, Ana Maria, Ed, Rosario, John, and Mary, Phil, and those we name in our hearts or aloud at this time. Lord, in your mercy, Lord. compassionate God, the adversary of the attack of the Twin Towers. We ask you, Lord, that you heal our families, that you heal those who have been wounded with this tragic event. Allow us to look at what happened, what is happening now, and what will be happening in this country as part of what your compassion can cover. Help us to live with that memory, remembering but also healing what has happened. Allow us to bring love, understanding, compassion to a suffering world. Allow us to grow in our faith as we heal, as we continue the ministry that you have commanded each one of us. The Lord in your mercy. Redeeming God, you accompany your people through every stage of life. We give you thanks for the saints who now rest in your embrace. The Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. God bless everybody, and I know there are people who are
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. All who hunger and thirst, come. The table is ready. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Amen. Lord of light, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And now receive the benediction as you go forth from this place. May the Lord walk before you to show you the way. May the Lord be above you to protect you. May the Lord be behind you to encourage you. May the Lord be beside you to be your friend. May the Lord be within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.